Life's too short to drive boring cars. BMW is what a finely piece of crafted German automotive engineering. But the real question is, can they last over 100,000 miles? The short answer is no, and the long answer is maybe. I mean, BMW's leaders in innovation, leaders in technology, and in their class, often leaders in performance. In some cases, when comparing to some of their rivals, they even appear to be leaders in value. But the real question is, can they be leaders in lasting a long time? Now, I've personally owned five BMWs myself, I've had friends who have owned numerous BMWs, and I've got friends that work on these cars daily. So I can literally speak in depth as to what I can expect for longevity and how long I expect a BMW to last. And I personally had some BMWs that last over 130,000 miles and others that couldn't even make it 60,000 miles. And today I want to shed some light on the situation why modern day BMWs will not make it 100,000 miles. Let's get into it now. So my personal experience comes from back in an E36 model. This is the E46, so this is the predecessor to what I had was the E36. I had a 318 Ti, which actually had a couple of minor problems, and then I moved up to a 320 in 1992. Now that was an inline six cylinder engine, and it was silky smooth. We had lots of problems. One of them is a hard start on a warm engine, and the other one was numerous coolant leaks. I had a water pump and a thermostat, and the thermostat is tucked away in a very tight spot. You have to pull the fan, and it's a very difficult access. And because of that, it sounds like a simple part, but the dealer quoted me about $800 parts and labor for a thermostat. So I decided to take a day off work and do it myself because the trade-off was actually to save some money by doing it myself as this was a difficult part to access. Then of course we had other issues. Window regulators failed on it, that gets expensive, and it becomes just a pain in the rump. I also had an issue with door handles breaking off and the interior fabric started to wear holes. I didn't have the leather, I had the fabric interior, and you started to see foam. All that happened before 200,000 kilometers, 120,000 miles, and I considered myself lucky with the E36, it actually ran that far. And another personal experience, I bought an E60 M5. That's that glorious V10 S85 engine. You would also find it in the M6 back in the mid 2000s. Now on one hand, it's a wonderful engine when it's working. On the other hand, I've had to pour a pile of money into it already from throttle actuators to the tune of about $4,000. I've also had to do some cooling lines that started to spring some leaks. But I actually consider myself lucky because my car only has 60,000 kilometers on it. And I know by the time you hit 100,000 kilometers, you better be looking at doing rod bearings because those engines are notorious for that you might as well count another five to ten thousand dollars once you hit that kind of mileage and then there's others that say the computing power in the e60 m5 is that that exceeds the nasa space shuttle so everything that goes is expensive bmw charges a minimum 169 dollars just to look at the damn car and the labor rate is enough to keep a king in goal and another bmw that i currently own is very similar to this what i'm looking at here is an x5 35d and i actually have an older version i have the e70 mine happens to be a 2009 and the fact that I made it to about 130,000 miles absolutely blows my doors off. I consider myself lucky because that's a rarity in the BMW world. But let me explain a few of the things I've dealt with with this and sadly even my X5 is currently sitting with the dealer in the service department waiting on a decision from BMW Canada whether they're going to consider a good faith decision on replacement of a part. But let's talk about some of the issues. As I said we've got the 35D like this one right here, X Drive. And they've got great keyless entry, wonderful high gloss black trim all the way around, wonderful wheels, stout looking fender flares that make them look aggressive. And yes, you can tow some weight with these. Wonderful little overhangs and sharp look from the back. Of course, a small roof rack to haul your projects. And you've got the large glass space on top of the roof to allow a lot of light inside for all the passengers. We've got the wonderful angel eye headlights and their classic BMW kidney style grille. So this car is very similar to mine. And we loved it for the way it looked, the way it drove, the 35D, the diesel engine actually hauls it around quite nicely. And ours has the third row, so it has the rear air self-leveling suspension. So I've had vacuum leaks, which cost me thousands of dollars for diagnostics. And our vehicle actually has a third row seating. And because of that, it has the rear air self-leveling suspension. And we've replaced those rear airbags three times because they only last two or three years and then they start to leak down and you come out in the morning and the vehicle's sitting on its rump. Now those aren't particularly inexpensive either. We've also had a problem here. 
just under the BMW extended warranty of 200,000 kilometers and 10 years, BMW is providing an additional warranty that right behind this front bumper, tucked right down in there, there's a diesel exhaust fluid tank. It's an active tank, there's a passive tank on the back, and it feeds into this. Now there's a heater and a temperature sensor, and it provides the injection of the diesel exhaust fluid. It's a faulty part, and that's why BMW extended the warranty, but our replacement part has now failed again. We've also had glow plugs go. That was a costly venture to the tune of close to $3,000. And we're not even talking about brakes and tires we're strictly talking about unexpected repairs the vehicle has cost us three arms and four legs in about eight years time frame and the only reason it made it to 130,000 miles is because we're extremely diligent in trying to keep these vehicles on the road and I basically had an older version of what you're seeing here it's a coupe I had an E92 335 and it actually had the N54 which is the three liter twin turbo engine and they only ran that for a short time because there was just way too many issues. Now I personally enjoyed driving it, it was a lot of fun. Mine was a six speed manual, rear wheel drive and slightly tuned so it had a lot of power. But let me tell you, I had 60,000 miles and I couldn't get rid of it fast enough. I bought it used, it had all the updates and maintenance records but it still couldn't last barely past 60,000 miles. But let's talk about some of the things that I experienced with that car. Again, like all coupes such as mine, you have the great two door setup, the small trunk at the back and rear wheel drive. You have a beautiful sunroof, wonderful mirrors, angel eye style headlights, and the bold grill that you would expect from BMW. I didn't want to take the word for it. I researched it all over the forum and everybody talked about all the problems. But I thought, oh yeah, I can tolerate it. I've had BMWs before. I can get through this, no problem. Well, guess what? The two turbos are mounted on the passenger side along the bottom of the engine here. And mine was already starting to rattle in the wastegate. So that's a common problem. My high pressure fuel pump was replaced under an extended warranty. The fuel injectors were failed. It already had one decarbonizing treatment. And in the time I owned it, I had to do a water pump, a thermostat. I also had to do the intake manifold O-rings, there's six of them. And then they had to be done because I was starting to experience vacuum and pressure leaks and that was a, one of the culprit areas. The other problem area was the, the oil filter housing, which leaked like a sieve. I had coolant and oil leaks from there. There's two odd shaped gaskets, one between the cooler and the filter housing, and one between the filter housing and the engine. Two different sets of O-rings. Very difficult to access the one set on the engine because you actually had to pull the intake manifold to get at one of the bolts. Very time consuming because to even get at the intake manifold, you had to pull apart cross braces and the shroud that's underneath the hood. Lots of labor to get that repair done. Then I had a few other O-rings and a few other coolant hoses that I had to replace. And all of this happened within less than a year's time. Now sure, I know you could say the previous owner maybe neglected it, but he had pretty solid goat trail of maintenance paperwork to show that this vehicle has been upkept. The bottom line is they just weren't built to last. The bottom end is solid, they're forged internals, but it's everything around it that just doesn't survive. And right here we have a beautiful X6 and it's a 35i. It's a very attractive vehicle but it's typical in line with the X5. So X6, X5, more or less the same vehicle other than you've got the shaved top end. And this is a sport activity vehicle versus an SUV, which is the X5. But what we have here is the 35i right there. So in other words, this vehicle under the hood has the N55 engine. And the N55 replaced that nasty N54 engine that I had. This is now a single turbo but twin scroll. Now typical what you're finding with a lot of BMWs, you can still have issues with the Vanos, which is the variable valve timing. They run under pressurized systems. You can get the Vanos rattle. You have to maintain your oil and you have to maintain your solenoids. The Vanos systems are very expensive when they break. So that's another potential reason why when vehicles get older, people neglect. Coolant leaks are always a problem area with a lot of BMWs. But if you're gonna experiment at all with a BMW, stick with the latest six cylinder engines. For example, the B58, which is the current generation six cylinder engine, or the N55 like we have here, which is moderate. There's still problem areas, but it's not as bad. And here's another piece of engineering marvel. Right here we have the BMW 650. Absolutely glorious to drive, fun, fast, luxurious, and very attractive. But look at this vehicle here. Nobody's gonna deny that that's not a good looking vehicle. You've got the wonderful headlights and trademark grills that you typically find with most BMWs. Fog lights, beautiful alloy wheels. And you've got all kinds of little accents and lights. Kind of a plain little mirror. But look at this giant glass panel on the roof. Then you cycle around and you have this slightly awkward rear trunk. But you'll notice you've got one and two exhaust tips 
in the 650i. Now they are beautiful vehicles, but you gotta realize in anything recent years, the 50i series means you have that beautiful 4.4 liter twin turbo V8, but gay, wait a minute, the problems that it can punch out aren't so beautiful. For example, this is a V8 engine and in the V they go and sandwich these a couple of turbochargers in there and when those turbochargers start to develop extra heat because you're driving this car hard or for extended periods that heat then sort of blends into the heads of the engine and then what you wind up with is heads that start to distort. You have valve guides and valve guide seals that start to melt down and then you wind up with oil that sucks through the valve guides and sadly that results in excessive oil consumption. Some of them also have timing chain problems where they either start rattling on a startup, you'll hear it or they'll just fail completely as well because the 50 series cars loaded up with a lot of technology, leave them too long and the battery will drain excessively. We couldn't also call it a BMW if we didn't have a few coolant leaks and oil leaks along the way, for example, valve cover gaskets or thermostats and water pumps. So if you happen to be a wonderful owner or potential owner of one of these with the 50 series, like 550, 650, 750, 850, or X5 and X6 M50i, then be prepared for the worst. And then you see this beautiful 3 Series right here. This is the 328 and it uses the N20 turbocharged four-cylinder engine. Now they look great and they were very fuel efficient. They put down decent horsepower numbers and just sipped fuel. They also had the great headlights and the grill that you'll find typically with most BMWs and the little bumper that's pretty consistent with the brand. How about the wheels? Great little rims and a little mirror that's consistent with most. BMWs always had these great little handles and a sunroof to boot. Circle around, you've got a pretty conventional trunk as we're talking about a sedan here in the 328. LED tail lights. So this car is pretty up to date, but sadly it's that N20 engine that has now been replaced by the B48, which is the engine to have because this N20 is known for notorious timing chain issues, particularly in the earlier years. And when timing chains fail because of weak timing chain hardware and the ramps, chains pile up, pistons and valves run into each other and you result in an engine failure that goes boom. Not only that, you have oil filter housing issues, particularly where extended oil service intervals back in those days would start to collapse oil filters. So these engines often wouldn't go for a lot of miles because of some of the problems that you're finding. Also coolant, oil leaks, just throw those on the mix and you've got a recipe for disaster. So realistically many of the BMW engines are well designed and engineered but unfortunately engineered obsolescence. And people ask me can these cars actually make it to 100,000 miles? Realistically it becomes more a question of how much money you want to throw at it because if you continually throw endless piles and heaps of cash and you want to financially commit yourself with the risk of going broke then absolutely a BMW can certainly run the distance but unfortunately the reality is the first owners are good because warranty covers you off but as the second, third, fourth owners roll through, often the budgets aren't there to support, they start neglecting, parts start falling apart, and it just becomes way too unaffordable and unpractical to keep pumping money into the beast. So why have I owned so many BMWs? Well, first of all, they drive well, they're handsome, and they are a great performing vehicle. But with that said, I'm also starting to learn that there's a connection, and that when you commit to the brand, you're truly committing financially, and it's all starting to make sense right here. And with all of that said, be sure to check out that list, some of the top vehicles that will make it over 300,000 miles. Hope to see you real soon. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.